Hopkins here with a special edition of The Scoop for Mason County Press brought to you by Spectrum Health Lennington Hospital. And I am joined today with State Senator Kurt Vanderwall. How are you? Good morning. Very well. Thanks. President of Spectrum Health Lennington Hospital, Gerber Hospital, and Integrated Health Services of North Muskegon, Drew Dostal. How are you? Great, Kate. How are you? That is a mouthful. It is. <laughs> I am good. And Dr. Amy Beeman, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you guys for joining me today. So we are going to be talking about the topic that's on everybody's mind, especially right now with the rising numbers, is uh, COVID-19 and the coronavirus. So, um, Drew, I'm going to start with you. So, in terms of West Michigan, in regards to COVID-19, can you tell me about the increasing positive cases and kind of what that is looking like around here right now? Absolutely. Well, first of all, let me thank Senator Vanderwall for being here and Dr. Beeman for coming and talking about COVID-19 with us to get the word out. It's, uh, it's very critical right now. Uh, so in our in our area, it's growing. It is it's on the rise, pretty much right in lockstep with the rest of the, of the state. Uh, for the most part, there are hot spots that are faster, obviously, uh, than us, but uh, but not many. We're right in there. Um, so our testing has gone from about a four percent um, rate of uh, infectivity to actually we we get up into about sixteen percent some days. So. Um, that's pretty high. Uh, early on in the in the COVID uh, pandemic, people were hoping to keep it under four, and they always said, "Boy, we'll be okay if we can keep it under sure. four. Well, we're not there anymore. Okay. So um, it, that's the worry. So, and that's the whole region. Right. We can okay. Speak to that. So, um, I was going to ask Dr. Mew, but she's on a special call, so I'm going to keep it with you, Drew. Okay. Um, can you talk about um, like testing and? I know people know that you guys have moved the testing site here in in Ludington, but talk over just overall how testing is looking, where they need to go, how they need to sign up, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, well, first of all, let's talk about where to sign up. You should do the screening tool on SpectrumHealth.org um, to to see if you even need a test. First okay. of all, um, and it'll it'll direct you to your nearest location. Um, if you're in the New Ago area, you're going to want to go to the hospital at Gerber. Um, or if you're here in Mason County or even Oceana, you may want to come up this direction to the Ludington Hospital location. We're doing anywhere from 80 to 120 here in Ludington. We're doing more than that, even in, at Gerber. Okay. Um, we've seen up to 200 uh, tests a day of, at the drive through We're no longer taking walk-ins, so you want to make sure you get in there and, uh, and make uh, an appointment. Okay. Otherwise, we'll have to turn you away after you sit in line, and that's not... Fun. Right, yeah. <laughs> It's not uh, happy for anybody. No, it so. is not. Okay, Dr. Beeman, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. What kinds of things are you guys seeing when somebody tests positive for COVID? Are you seeing people in the ICUs? How is that? Are you releasing people to go back home? How is that looking for this area and Gerber? Okay. Well, I'm a hospitalist here at Spectrum Lennington, so I know what's going on here. I'm pretty certain the same thing is going on at, Ber at Gerber Hospital. But what we've been experiencing lately are a significant uh, number of COVID-19 admissions. Uh, a, a lot of them are coming to our general uh, medical floor on the step-down unit and our COVID unit on either supplemental oxygen or high flow nasal cannula. And uh, our CCU uh, for the last uh, several days has been at capacity and we do have patients on ventilators right now that are very critically ill and some of them are hovering towards that end. So we've been very, very busy. We've had to uh, uh, have another uh, physician come in and okay. help. And um, so that's what's going on. Okay. They do come in short of breath. They very typically have a fever. There are a select number of lab abnormalities um, uh, that we watch daily. Um, so okay. it's, it's pretty variable. Right. I, I would imagine, too, because there are so many different levels of kind of what it can look like. So Absolutely. Better What's exciting, though, is uh, a lot of uh, patients are getting better and right. are going home. And um, so that, that's, that's been really nice. Um, some of our critically ill patients are taking a very, very long time. Um, you know, they're... In all due respect, you know, they're in there for several days that's holding up those beds mm -hmm. and because it takes a very long time to recover. But most people are doing well. They, um, 
we're able to wean them off their oxygen or close to off their oxygen and they're able to go home. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's a positive for it all is, the, it the, is. the bad things that we keep hearing about everything. So, Absolutely. All right, Senator Vanderwall, what is the legislature doing to um, kind of mitigate COVID-19 and keeping people aware of it and, you know, keeping people in check kind of too to make sure that they're following the correct protocols and everything. That's a great question and I appreciate that. I, I would say in the last two weeks, the numbers and the data that has been shared back and forth between all the state health organizations, our hospital systems has been overwhelming. And I, yesterday I probably had a hundred pages of, of information. Wow. Today we have a noon meeting with the the state health department and then at one o'clock we actually have a meeting with the governor today a zoom meeting but you know we continue to try to make sure that our frontline workers have taken care we passed a lot of uh, legislation to make sure that there was extra money with extra product or ppe but ultimately it comes down to is we're giving people the tools to make sure that they can protect themselves and that's the knowledge to wear a mask uh, the knowledge to make sure that they continue to do proper hygiene uh, in, in really social distance right now. I mean, as we sit here about six feet away from each other, this is the way you need to conduct yourself on a regular basis. So limit your exposure sites that you go to and, and make sure that you're, you're paying attention to your surroundings. Um, you know, we've unfortunately seen uh, several outbreaks in the state house this week and they actually had to cancel their session yesterday. We still had it in the Senate. But, uh, you know, we had one of our representatives from Nuego, which is in uh, the area that Drew is president for Spectrum. Um, but we also had the majority, the minority uh, leader, uh, Jim Ananek, that uh, is out right now because he has COVID. So it, it, we need to pay attention. We need to continue to do work to make sure that the public understands where we're at and that they can continue to operate safely and, uh, and stay healthy. Well, our thoughts and prayers go out to those families too, because Absolutely. no matter what level of you know extremity it or extremity <laughs> extreme that it is, it's still it, it can be devastating. So we'll, we're thinking about them. So, Dr. Beeman, if somebody tests positive and doesn't get admitted, walk us through what that looks like. What do they need to do? Okay, you're positive, but you're not severe enough to stay. We're sending you home. What do you do? You need to quarantine yourself, stay at the, another area of the house, maybe a situation where you're in your own bedroom, your own bathroom, and uh, stay uh, quarantine yourself basically for 14 days. If you start developing high fevers, fever over 101 degrees, and you become increasingly short of breath, that is a signal to come back to the hospital. A lot of patients uh, have been coming back probably between four to eight days after their okay. initial visit uh, with increasing shortness of breath. Okay. So. And are our hospitals, um, are they in danger of hitting capacity? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And what's also concerning too is healthcare workers becoming ill now and um, staffing issues because of their illness because you become, uh, you test positive, become ill, you're out for about 14 days. So absolutely, like I said, our ICU is full right now. Right. It's been full for, you know, a couple of weeks now. And, um, and then our COVID units are filling up too. So um, okay. we're, you know, we have emergency plans, of course, of where else to put people. Okay. Now, Drew, I'm gonna ask you, um, if the community wants, the community members have always been really gracious about wanting to help give back what can they do to, to help during this time? Well, they're welcome to send an email to me or to, uh, or to even call the hospital and ask to talk to administration and they'll talk to one of my assistants and we can set up a time for them to do that if they want. Uh, we, do, we do appreciate those, those gestures and a lot of people have donated food and, and tokens of appreciation and cards and you name it and it's been really wonderful. Because the frontline uh, workers are they're tired they're spread thin they've been doing this this battle for nine months and uh, even when it uh, slowed down during the summer they still had COVID patients and they still took took care of them so 
um, it, it's much appreciated. Sure. And what can everybody do really to, and I know you touched upon it, but just mention again, to slow the spread. To slow the spread, we have to keep our distance. First of all, we need to social distance, which um, is hard coming into the, to the holidays. And we want to do that, <clears throat> be very wise of how we approach that. Uh, if we can avoid being with people who are not normally in our household, we, we should do that uh, for safety right now. Um, if you absolutely have to be with somebody that you haven't had that close exposure to, you need to mask, keep your six to 10 foot distance, wash your hands frequently, you know, all those things, and, uh, and, and make sure that we're uh, uh, stopping the spread. Sure. And then washing your hands is a, a big thing, but tell us a little bit about why it's so important because I think a lot of people are like oh they go under and they're like okay you know and they say to you know say your alphabet or sing twinkle twinkle little star twice or something like that why is it so important to take that you know extra time to really wash your hands because if you look um, there's several medical studies that suggest the absolute best way to slow the spread of an infectious illness is to wash your hands and COVID-19 is no exception. Okay, and we're gonna close with you. Big question. What are you and your other legislators recommending for community members to do to help fight against COVID-19? Well, there's several things that we, we've recommended. Number one, pay attention to your surroundings. Sure. Be aware of where you're at. Num number two, respect your your small businesses and your, your community friends, and that's, if. When you go into a store, mask up, respect that. They're trying to keep their workers safe. Right. And when we take it out on them, that doesn't help things. And if you if you don't want to wear a mask like that, then use the other options that we have, and that's ordering your food online and doing those things. But most of all, we want us to, to understand our surroundings. We want to make sure that we, we let people know that we're working hard to make sure that we open the door for Pfizer with the, uh, the vaccine that we hope will be out the early part of December. We've been working very closely with them to help expedite that, of course, with the, the federal government. But the other piece that we tell people, and we haven't talked a lot about this, is get outdoors. I know it's cold, but exercise is important. And, you know, sitting in a chair in front of a TV set or your computer is not healthy. Right. And we talked about this earlier this morning with Drew and I. Mental health is another mm -hmm. big concern right now. And that's making sure that you take time to call a relative, call a friend, call somebody you know that's struggling. That communication can mean a huge difference in the health of that person. So we'll continue to work forward. And I, as always, reach out to my office if you have uh, any questions or anything that we can help you with. Can you give us um, contact information real quick about how Absolutely. they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. The best way to get a hold of me is area code 517-373-1725. Okay. And that'll ring right into my office. We're staff uh, every day from 8 to 5 and uh, we'll be glad to help wherever we can. Great. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me today because this is a serious topic that's going to continue to, you know, rear its ugly head, I have a feeling. So um, for any other news, check out masoncountypress.com and our weather is always brought to you by Smith Nettie Eddy Insurance. And if you're feeling sick, take the precautions that you need to take and get a COVID test, contact Senator Vanderwall, contact the hospital to see what you can do to help yourself and your friends and family.